vehicles popularly used for public transport in the Philippines similar to minibuses. However, they do not follow a routing system with proper stops due to the tradition of picking up passengers anywhere. Consequently, commuters encounter long waits and intense delays. Due to this, the Davao City Mayor has pushed for duty phase out which would remove over 7,000 jobs of jeepney operators. Hence, this study aims to resolve the traffic caused by jeepneys without the removal of jobs through constructing an optimized routing model for jeepney transit in Davao City. Specifically, this study aims to do the following. Before we proceed, let us first discuss what a minimum spanning tree is. A minimum spanning tree is a subset of a weighted and undirected graph that connects all nodes without forming cycles and with the least total edge weight. If the current jeepney system of Davao City is directly modeled or graphed, infinite nodes will exist due to the practice of picking up passengers at random locations. Thus, the proponents first generated specific jeepney stops to assigning a certain number of jeepney stops represented as nodes in each of the 11 administrative districts in the city, according to the formula in Table 1. The variable y refers to the number of nodes assigned in District X. Its value is the rounded off quotient of District X's population and the population of the least populated district. The y most populated barangays in District X would then be selected as nodes. With this, administrative districts with larger populations will have greater population proportion values, meaning more jeepney stops will be assigned in this area. Doing so, population proportion values were found and nodes were selected, as shown in Table 7. The data used for node selection were gathered from the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA's latest 2015 population census report. After generating jeepney stops, all possible connections between every pair of nodes were represented as links. Each link should contain information regarding traffic congestion level, number of commuters, and distance. For information regarding the traffic congestion level, traffic data during peak and off-peak hours from Google Maps were used to compute a value for the travel time index. Google Maps was also used to take note of the distances between every pair of selected nodes. For the number of commuters, the PSA 2015 population census report was used to approximate the number of commuters in an area. To combine these three criteria into one, data gathered from each criterion was normalized and aggregated through fixed point scoring in accordance with the value hierarchy in Table 2. Doing so, each link now only had one value that it considers all three criteria. At this point, a network or spanning tree was formed. Through using Prim's algorithm on Python, a high-level programming software, only the optimal links were left to be part of the routing paradigm. With this, the minimum spanning tree is complete and shown in Figure 1. The tree then contained information on how to traverse from one jeepney stop to another while considering the three criteria in the best way possible. And now with the routes formulated, the only missing element left to complete the routing paradigm was to determine the minimum number of jeepneys that must pass through each route to maintain the routing paradigm's efficiency. In deciding the number of vehicles that must circulate each route, a transportation model was used. To proceed, the proponents labeled the 11 administrative districts as sources, they included links or routes as destinations, and the jeepneys as commodities. Table 9 here shows the supply of 7,610 jeepneys proportioned to circulate each administrative district fairly, while Table 10 shows the proportion demand for each route. These values or proportions were yielded using the formula in Table 1, again according to their respective populations. The yielded values were then organized into a transportation subgroup, as shown in Table 3 with no unique cost given to each cell. However, solving for the current transportation sub blue resulted in infeasibility because some sources had an excess of five jeepneys circulating the area, while some destinations had unmet demands. As a result of this infeasibility, the proportion supply of each administrative district had to be adjusted using the linear programming model in Table 4. Through the inequality constraints in the maximizing linear programming model, the exact values of the excess supplies and unmet demands were found. The proportion supply of each administrative district was adjusted accordingly, as shown in Table 11. With this, the supplies and demands will be balanced and organized into an updated and feasible transportation sub blue. For accuracy and efficiency, the new transportation sub blue was solved through solving its linear programming model form in Lingo, which is a linear programming software. Combining the transportation to blues results with the minimum spanning tree formed by Prim's algorithm, the routing paradigm is now complete. In the figure shown, each color represents an administrative district as expressed in the legend, and the minimum number of jeepney vehicles that must operate between each stop to keep the routing paradigm efficient is put beside its corresponding R. In the routing paradigm, inter-district travel for jeepney vehicles was not permitted to control traffic flow. Thus, commuters must transfer jeepney vehicles once inter-district travel is necessary. This means that if implemented, commuters may experience jeepney transfers more frequently. Nonetheless, this would not significantly increase jeepney fares as jeepney operators' costs would decrease. However, jeepney vehicles may travel to other stops in one district as long as the minimum number of jeepney vehicles that circulate between each stop is satisfied. The study demonstrates how multiple criteria decision making, particularly fixed point scoring, can be integrated with graph theory and linear programming to improve the efficiency of public transportation in Davao City and potentially in other developing cities. If Davao City were to implement this jeepney routing paradigm, it would not only improve the efficiency of the city's transportation system, but also potentially preserve the jobs of over 7,000 jeepney drivers. Moreover, it would allow commuters to travel within the city more swiftly. It would also improve the jeepney operators' profits as their operation costs would decrease with the shorter distances traveled.